Okay, so this first set is nothing more than really plugging and chugging. In other words, given this equation here, y equals 3x plus 4. Wherever I see the x, I, I plug in a negative 1, because it says so right here. So again, y equals 3x plus 4. Plug that negative 1 in for x, then do the math. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Add the 4, and you get a positive 1. So again, when x equals negative 1, y equals 1. We can see then that the solution is the ordered pair. We always list the x first, negative 1, 1. Pause, go ahead and head into class kick. I have a couple there for you. So on this first one here, it says we're going to plug in negative 3 for each of them. So the same number gets plugged in each time. So again, in for x. So y equals... 2 times negative 3 plus 1. On B, on the second one, y equals negative 4 times negative 3 plus 3. And then on C, and we'll go back and work all these here in just a second, y equals 0 times negative 3. No, that didn't work out. It didn't really fit in there, did it? We'll rewrite it. y equals 0 times negative 3 minus 4. Alrighty, so back to the first one then. Going to actually go through and work them out. Uh, we have y equals 2 times negative 3 plus 1. But 2 times 3 is negative 6 plus 1, which is then negative 5. So to write the answer as an ordered pair, that's going to be negative 3, negative 5. Second one. We're going to go ahead and work out here. So y equals negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12 plus 3. And then 12 plus 3 is 15. So again, we start with that negative 3 in the x place and then 15 for the y. And then the last one over here, uh, we have 0 times negative 3, which is 0. So y equals 0 minus 4, which is just negative 4. So our ordered, port, ordered pair becomes negative 3 negative 4. Again, just a little plugging in and working it out following your order of operations. I'm going to continue watching for another example from me. Same topic as the last one, this time just with a story problem. The equation t equals 21 minus 0.01 n models the normal low July temperature in degrees Celsius at Mount Rushmore. I don't know how they came up with that, but they did. In the equation, t is the temperature at n meters above the base of the mountain. Find the normal low July temperature at 300 meters above the base. So in other words, take this 300, plug it in for N in the original equation, and that will give us the temperature. So 0 0.01 times 300. So again, plugging that 300. 300 times 0 0.01 is 3. So 21 minus 3 is 18. So the solution here of the equation is 318. The normal low temperature at 300 degrees in July is about 18 degrees Celsius. Go ahead and pause, head into class kick. You're going to work a similar problem. So in this case, it says find the normal low July temperature at 700 meters above the base of Mount Rushmore. So same thing. We're going to plug a 700 instead of 300. So T equals 21 minus 0 0.01 times, in this case, 700. Again, the formula is right here that we're looking for. So then, we have 21 minus, and again, 700 times 0 0.01 is 7. 21 minus 7 is 14. So the answer is 14. In this case, it's going to be degrees Celsius. Continue for more examples from me. Alrighty, this time graphing a linear equation. Now we've already practiced graphing points, so it's nothing more than that in plain connect the dots. So first thing we do here is make a table of values. So I'm given this right here. Uh, negative one ha y equals negative one half x plus three. Is two two a solution? Well, to find out, I'm going to see if two two fits in there. And you can graph to find the solution if you wish. So making a table of values. So we'll plug in two and zero and four, and we come out with. Uh, negative 2, 4, 0, 3, and 4, 1. And then graph those points. And again, we practiced that the other day, so it shouldn't be any big deal. So negative 2, 4 is right there. Uh, 0, 3 is right here. And 4, 1 is right here. 
draw a nice straight line between them, and then find out, is 2, 2 actually on that? Well, if we go over here, say up 2 over 2, it looks like it most certainly does fall right there. Now again, this only works uh, graphing for the solutions if you're really good at graphing, and quite often I'm not that accurate. So another way to do it, again, you can check it by substituting, plug that 2, 2 in. So up here, if we plug in a 2, negative 1 half times 2 is negative 1, plus 1 is indeed 2. So 2, 2 does work if we check it algebraically. Go ahead and pause, head into class kick. Your turn for another one. We actually have two here on this one, and I'm going to do the first one right here for you, and you can obviously see the answer over here. Graph each linear equation is the given point a solution. So we have y equals 2x plus 1. And again, you can make this as a table if you wish. So what that looks like, and I'll draw it in here just a second. So again, showing the work here. We're going to plug those in. And I, I picked negative 2, 0, and 2 for my table. So to plug those in, switch colors here. Uh, we're going to say y equals 2 times negative 2 plus 1. So that's 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 plus 1, which is negative 3. You might ask before I continue here why I picked those numbers. I just did. I noticed that I'm looking for is negative 1, 1 there. So I picked, well, something is around negative 1, so it kind of goes through that area when I graph it. I could literally plug negative 1 in, and you could have found out too, even without the graphing piece. Uh, so continuing here, plug in a 0. Well, that's pretty easy. Uh, we have 0 plus uh, 1, which is 1. And then finally plugging in a 2. So y equals 2 times 2 plus 1. So that's 4 plus 1, which is the number 5. Then we just go back and we go ahead and graph those points. So we, plug the, we graph the point negative 2, negative 3. And again, if you remember how to do that, start at the 0, 0. 1, 2, and then down 3. Graph that here. Plot the point uh, 0, 1. And that is here. Uh, and that's about there anyway. And then the point 2, 5, which is going to put it up here. And you go ahead and play connect the dots. And so we asked about the point negative 1, negative 1, which is right here. So it looks like it does indeed go through there. And again, you can verify that. You plug it in. y equals 2 times negative 1 plus 1. Well, uh, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 plus 1, which is indeed negative 1. B on here is going to yield a similar story. So again, we had A on the last side. So we can cross this one out. Uh, this time is the point negative 2, 0 on there. So I went ahead and made my table. I left a little bit of room for work this time in the middle for it. Should have done that last time. Um, so I'm going to plug in negative 2, 0, and 2 on here to make my line. And so again, what's that look like? Well, I'm going to plug in here uh, 3 times negative 2 minus 2. I'm going to plug in... 3 times, that's a 2, I promise up there, 3 times 0 minus 2, and 3 times 2 minus 2. So uh, negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8. Uh, and then we have 0 times 3, which is 0 minus 2, so that's negative 2. And then the third one, 3 times 2 is 6 minus 2, so 4. So let's go ahead and plot those. Negative 2, negative 8. So I went ahead and plotted those each. Again, negative 2, negative 8, 0, 2, and 2, 4. And then we play connect the dots. And then we ask ourselves, does the point negative 2, 0 appear on there? Well, that's right here. And no, no matter ba how bad I graph theoretically, uh, that's not going to fall on there no matter what. Go ahead and continue for more examples from me. And this time... Uh, it says graph each equation is the equation a function. And we're not going to worry about that function piece. We're just going to go ahead and practice graphing. Two things i got to remind you of here when we're graphing uh, is two different kinds of equations. Notice how different these look. These don't have both y's and x's. They either have a y or an x. When we say y equals something, y equals 2 in this case, I go up on my graph to 2, right? So I go up on the y-axis to 2. And I'm going to go ahead and put a dot there just because I like to. And then... If it's y equals, x is everything else. So I'm able to just draw a nice straight line to cover all of the rest. 
Likewise, if it's x equals something, I go to x equals 2 in this case, so it's because it says x, x equals 2, and I don't go anywhere on the y. So x is going to always be 2, but y gets to be everything else. So y equals 2 is going to be a horizontal line. x equals 2 is going to be a vertical line. And I think we've already talked about the slope of those. This has a slope of 0. This has a slope of undefined. And I, I, I know, in fact, when we did the slope... Uh, uh, the slope unit, we discussed that. You. Yes, sir. Uh, so go ahead and pause and head back in the class kick, work a few, then come back and check. This time we're going to graph all three of these um, on the same line. So we'll start out here, x equals 1. Again, that's going to be a vertical line with an undefined slope. x at 1 is right here, and you make a nice straight line. I'm going to put all three on 1 like I told you to do in class kick. I apologize, I don't have a uh, purple pen in this, so I used blue for purple. Uh, so there's x equals 1, y equals negative 4. And again, so y is negative 4, that's certainly down, down here, and that's going to create a horizontal line. Again, the slope there is obviously 0, like we uh, practice in the slope section. That's a little bit off there. Um, and again, you can see all the answers over here to the, to the side. Uh, and then finally, c e or x equals 0, rather, not c equals 0, x equals 0, oddly enough, ends up being the uh, y-axis itself. So here's where, here's where y equals 0. That's going to create a horizontal line, which is actually, I'm sorry, the x-axis, not the y-axis. So again, a little bit off there. It's tough to kind of graph on this screen as I'm working. There we go. That turned out okay. So there you go.